Perfect. Okay. So just kind of maybe somebody turn your mic on to let me know if you can see my presentation. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So to kind of get started again, I'm sorry that you guys weren't able to get into the first one. And obviously I had some technical issues there, but there were many that were able to join and many that weren't able to join. So I'm happy we're able to do this again to get it recorded. So uh, I'm just... I've really enjoyed since we started My Broker Pro kind of all the support we've been giving each other. And that's kind of why I tend to do these presentations. If you were in my first webinar, which was, you know, how to grow your pipeline from zero to 44 million. I just, I've met so many amazing people throughout the last couple months. And I think that um, we've got a lot of ideas to share and things we can contribute to help grow each other's businesses. Because I know we're all after the same thing, which is mortgages and clients and stuff like that. But when I got to become a high producer um, at like 44 million, I kind of quickly realized that there's more than enough mortgages to go around. So um, helping each other out is, is really key in our industry because when I was at the bank, you have like unlimited support and resources at the bank because their big budgets and their outreach and everything like that so i think that's why um stuff like this is important so that we can lean on each other when we need to split deals when we need to and so forth so this method um and this presentation worked for me it may not work for everybody but um, i definitely found some success with it and managed to retain a lot of financial planners as referral partners throughout the last few years and uh, I think it's a great way to either get started, find your first deal, your next deal, or just to create a new partnership. This time of year is the best time of year to visit financial planners because they tend to be doing their annual reviews between now and um, December. They tend to not want to discuss or meet with their clients during the summer because everybody's really busy. So that's really their slow period, which is great because that's usually our busy period. So this is a great time for you to connect with them to fill this slow time for us. You know, over the last few years, if you've been a broker for a few years now, we haven't really seen the norm, which is a slowdown in the fall and the winter because we've had such a crazy real estate market. But that said, we're going into more traditional times now, especially with the current economy. So uh, we are, uh, many of us, even high volume producers are seeing a slowdown in um, our, our volume and our book and our referrals, leads, all that stuff. So this is a great time for you to get out there, meet somebody new, try to find new deals and make that connection because now is the time when they're gonna be in front of their clients. The duration's probably going to be about an hour. So again, if you guys need to step out, I've got it so that it is recording, hopefully this time. Um, but uh, we can go through the questions at the end. I'm going to kind of show you the slides and the presentations that I actually use with financial planners and also explain. So it will take a little bit longer. But this presentation, if you were to present it to a financial planner, would probably take you half an hour, 30 minutes, because you wouldn't have to kind of double dip on the, the content. So we'll just kind of talk about a few what the slides kind of coming up is. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about me um, and then we'll start the presentation, company intro, fun facts about your, you know, yourself and your career path. We'll talk about what is a mortgage broker and the benefits. Um, and then my favorite slide, which is building a fence around the client. So this is really kind of your strategy to gain these referral partners and the ideal clients that we work with, the free support that you're gonna offer financial planners. And um, also I forgot to mention this, but insurance agents, this is a good one for them as well. Very similar clientele. So uh, you can change this presentation to that as well. Recent closings, which is just to add some credibility to your business. So um, again, we'll go through what that looks like, but it does make it look a little bit more professional that you've helped people in, in um, the past, but you can also lean on your brokerage for this and uh, use some of the recent closings or just use the ones I have in the slide and fake it till you make it. That's what I did when I started. Um, rate updates, because you bet that a financial planner will almost 100 percent to ask you uh, about interest rates and what's going on in the economy because um, it's directly related to their field of work as well so uh, we have similar interests that way so it's a really easy way to start the conversation too so you're going to want to be prepared for that and then we'll just talk about like the google reviews and closing and then uh, how i added a slide at the very end on how i actually was able to obtain business from 
and get my first referral partners and first leads from this type of approach. Um, and then, of course, we'll go into questions after that. So a little bit about me um, is I got licensed as a mortgage broker in 2018, and I was actually lucky, lucky enough to work for a high volume producer here. I'm located in Kamloops, British Columbia. She did about 75 million a year. So uh, I was able to touch you know, 20, 30 files a month and close lots of those and just learn so much at such a rapid pace. Uh, and it was great that way it built a really strong foundation for my knowledge in the broker channel and just exposed me to so much that you know would take years of experience otherwise so um i really appreciated that and when i decided i wanted to go out kind of on my own i actually decided to join the bank uh, they approached me and i thought at the time it was a good deal you know going back would i do it again Probably not, but that's a different conversation. Um, but yeah, I worked for Bank of Montreal and much like a mortgage broker, I had to source my own business. I was 100% commission. Um, I had to find my own referral partners, leads and everything, right? So this is really when I started the whole hit the ground running and popped into realtors offices, builders, construction um, companies, financial planners, insurance agents. I really like eight hours a day I was as hustling. And if you've uh, done that or a new broker, you're well aware of what that feels like. And it could take months to establish your business and start seeing the benefits of uh, your hard work months later. So um in 2020 shortly after i joined bmo um or about a year after i grew my business from that zero to 44 million because obviously i couldn't take any of my previous employers business with me so i had to start from the ground up and uh, yeah i grew my business quickly i won all sorts of awards within my regional area my city and also with bmo across canada so i was very lucky that way but in 2021 um we kind of had a shift in our family i had um my baby we had a little baby boy he's about 18 months now and of course that rocked our world um being self-employed i don't get a mat leave or anything like that so um we we did things kind of backwards my husband got his license he took a pat leave and started brokering to see if he liked it and uh, that's where mortgage tech my mortgage company was created so he's uh, been a broker now for again yeah about about two years now and he's excellent he's doing about 30 million now himself so uh, he's grown at a rapid pace too and he's just um yeah it's brilliant he was meant to do this so that's kind of what happened there and then my broker pro which again is how i know sarah so um was founded just a couple months ago really in august and it was just for the need that you know mortgage brokers again don't have the resources that the banks do because we don't have these massive budgeting deep pockets and resources so that's kind of what my goal is to achieve is you know for a very affordable price to get people online these presentations email campaigns blogs all that kind of stuff so um just kind of a way for me to to help others with what i'm already doing within mortgage tech so again, before we jump into the uh, presentation, the goal of this presentation really is just to familiarize yourself with the conversation that's going to be had with the financial planner or the insurance agent. And what I mean by that is a lot of the time, um, I'm a big believer in pop-in, so you'll see that on my last slide of this presentation, but a lot of the time financial planners and insurance agents will not have the time to sit down with you and go through this presentation if you pop in. So you really wanna be prepared for that five minutes of conversation you may have in their lobby, you know, about rates, about how you can help them, having a pitch, which is really important. We'll go through a slide with that so that you can really connect in that five minutes so that when you go home and you send them an email and you ask to do a coffee to do your presentation it's quite a bit warmer of a lead and a connection so again it's just to familiarize yourself with how we can help them and uh, position yourself in a way that you can kind of go into their team and be a part of their team as well okay so this now we're jumping into the actual presentation and like i said it is for purchase the presentation itself on our website um, but of course you don't have to buy it but it is all editable and you can change everything the colors and everything to your brand 
So my, as I kind of mentioned, my real um, tactic is to p position myself within their team. So before I start a presentation, if I am lucky enough to kind of do one right away with them or plan one in the future, I really want to find out what they do with their business and what their pain points are and try to resolve them. And again, you want to connect with them. So prior to sitting down, I would probably ask them a few questions to get them talking before I start a presentation and just blab for half an hour. <laughs> because if you could figure out what the issues are that they're having prior to getting started, you can kind of fill the voids within your presentation with some of those issues so that you're really working the fact that you're going to be helping them. You know, when you get to a certain slide, you can slide in the fact that, you know, they've recently had a high net worth client not get approved and this is how you would do it, right? So to do that, you have to kind of flip the conversation around. So some questions I would ha ask is, you know, what kind of clients do you usually work with? They may work with young people who are just doing RSPs or they may work with mostly retirees, high net worth clients, self-employed. So now again, you're getting a sense of where you can kind of add into your conversation, how you're gonna help. I'd ask them, when do you usually meet them? Again, generally they meet and do their annual reviews this time of year, but maybe this person does it differently, right? So when do you usually meet with them? And then that way you know when you can help them. Do you usually gather their mortgage documents? This is important because obviously it helps you um, get another lead. But for a really good financial planner, the majority of the time they will co connect or collect their mortgage documents. And why they do this is because it's usually the largest asset that, that their client owns. And there's some serious savings to be had with a lower interest rate or debt consolidation or whatever that may look like. So getting their hands on the mortgage uh, annual mortgage statement is nice and you can talk to them about helping their clients with annual renewal or renewals and all that kind of stuff right so um, again just offering your services as long as they do that and if they don't collect the mortgage document that's a great time to say like maybe this this year you should start um, asking for the mortgage document so that I can help save your clients some money then again, asking, have you had any recent issues with financing for your clients? And if they're kind enough to share that information with you, then you can solve the problem and turn the conversation around and kind of be the hero, right? So when you're doing that, you're really connecting with them so that you can um, help, sol help solving their problems is really gonna envision, help them envision you within their business a strategy with their clients. So this is your mortgage company and kind of catchphrase. So just an introduction to your company. So for me, I would be saying, you know, my company is Mortgage Tech. My slogan is simple, fast and digital. So for us, we're very efficient in helping our clients online. So we use technology and even, you know, emails, phone calls, that kind of stuff, um, rather than meeting clients face to face. However, when you're meeting with the financial planner, just keep in mind that your pitch may change. So for me, even though I'm very digital and I haven't met with a client face to face in like five years, <laughs> I would probably tell the financial planner otherwise. So I would say like, even though I am very digital and efficient, I'm still available in person to meet your clients face to face, or even after one of your meetings, if you know you're gonna be meeting a client and you have already collected their mortgage statement, I could be readily available right after your meeting to meet with them. So you wanna make sure you do that because financial planners tend to meet their clients face to face. Of course, things have changed with COVID, but um, not just saying that you are completely digital because you do want to offer your services in person if you can, right? So again, just being there for their needs um, and something that benefits them, even if you don't land a deal out of it right away, popping by to their office and doing a deal will look really great when it comes to calling you again. Shows that you showed up, right? Um, just one, six, six. <clears throat> so this is our, our team. So here for myself, it would just be me and my husband. So Sarah Matu and Lucas Matu. And then sometimes I like to add like our son, you know, he's just a baby, but I'll say that he's actually the real boss. Of course, he dictates my time with his nap schedule. Uh, or sometimes I've added, you know, prior to having a baby, I used to add my dog because his name's Doug. And I think that's really funny. And he's a, a cool looking dude. So <laughs> I would sometimes add him and that just kind of helped break up the presentation a little bit and make it not so serious and not 
business all the time. And again, this, this slide is very similar in the sense that you're trying to break the silence and just tell them a little bit about yourself. So unique details, something funny, past career. Of course, if this isn't something you'd like to do, you can delete this slide. But again, I just think it helps them connect with you a little more. So for me, I would say, you know, I moved from British, I moved from Ontario to British Columbia all by myself when I was 19 years old to start a job that I had never even done before. <laughs> um, for something funny, I'd probably say, you know, it drives my husband crazy, but I love to watch like really bad corny romance movies. It drives, it honestly drives him crazy. <laughs> and then for past career, I love to add this one because most people are surprised to hear that I was actually an industrial electrician for seven years prior to entering the mortgage industry. So I had a huge career change, nothing to do with, you know, the financial sector or experience uh, in the mortgage industry other than the fact that I had started purchasing properties at a rather young age. So I had experience buying and selling, which is how I connected with my broker and became a mortgage broker. So anyways, I think kind of explaining this stuff and going through it is, is a great way because especially if you are new, you shouldn't be ashamed of what your previous career was because that gave you um, you know, some industry knowledge and, you know, connections that you're going to see throughout the rest of your career. Like I still really help a lot of the people I used to work with at the mine. And um, yeah, and even, you know, when financial planners call about tradesmen or people like that, like I can relate to that. So I'm, I'm there obviously to help. So don't be ashamed, add it in there. And um, a lot of these these professionals have done previous jobs as well in our industry, right? Realtors, financial planners, insurance agents. We all have a, a separate story in, in life before we started in this industry. So this slide here is about kind of about bragging rights essentially um you want to tell them a, a little bit about your success your years and achievements milestones and awards and then just yeah kind of go through things and and your career path essentially and again if you're new you can really lean on your brokerage for this so that and show the financial planner that you're a part of a bigger team that's here to support you and their clients. So even though you're doing the presentation by yourself because you're the one trying to achieve a new referral partner, you can definitely let them know that you have a big team of support behind you. Okay, so for me, success details would be much like I said before, growing my business from zero to four, 44 million in one year. I've been a broker six years now and I've won multiple awards uh, regionally, city and through Canada. Milestones would be, you know, for me, leaving the bank and starting our own brokerage for Mortgage Tech in 2021 and having my husband join the team as a fabulous underwriter and awards i kind of touched on that already but essentially yeah you just really do want to brag and show them that you've had success with this or your team has had success with this in the past it's all about credibility what is a mortgage broker so uh, financial planners will know obviously most of them know what a mortgage broker is but their clients tend to visit the banks and and credit unions before they visit mortgage brokers and the reason being is a lot of them are self-employed retirement kind of elderly so they're very loyal to the in the um, institution that they're already with so um us and the financial planners will hear this often like i've been banking with rbc for 30 years and they declined me for a mortgage or a line of credit or whatever it may be so you want to make it known to the financial planner that you're here to help and provide more options just because rbc decline doesn't mean that td will one of your monoline lenders or an alternative lender so you're here to say we're here to pro uh, provide your clients with more lenders, programs and products, different policies. Like think about all the policies we have access to, add backs, rentals, all that kind of stuff that we can we can access for their clients. Um, and then a really big thing is, is mentioning that we're actually qualified. So, you know, I know this from being at the bank because I let my license lapse when I was at the bank. So when you work for the bank as a mortgage specialist or just as a banker, you actually don't have to have any credentials like we do to get our licensing um, and pass our courses and our exams. 
So these people are trained just by the institution that they work with. They only have access to those program programs, policies, and interest rates. And that's why a lot of the time, as you guys know, when we gain business from people who've previously went to the bank, there's just a lack of experience. And having worked with those types of people myself, I really realized um, the bank is lacking some actual qualified experts. So that's what you're here to promote. Hey, I've actually got my license. I passed my exam. Exam. I have this experience and I'm here to help you know the average banker may do a few mortgages a year because they have to do other things like savings accounts checkings accounts um, all sorts of different investments and this and that so they don't do just mortgages like you do so you're an expert in mortgages is really your pitch and then reminding them that it's free to work with us a lot of people are stuck in the fact that um, brokers used to be a thing where you only went and seen them when you had bad credit or something like that well times have changed we we have access to great interest rates great programs we still have access to bruce credit that kind of stuff but generally it's free to work with us unless the client really does need private financing but even again at that still paid directly by the lender so um, something to promote and make sure they understand that you can give your advice and provide value without it costing their clients anything our advantage in our client process um, so we'll go I've got a couple more slides on this but just to build my biggest part of this presentation and the biggest point you should retain is is the building a fence around your clients and we'll go through that in the next slide which is just about that but essentially it's helping them protect their clients from leaving them and going to the bank because that's how financial planners make business or make money right and they make it on the book of business that they keep with these clients and if you're if their clients need a mortgage they're going to go somewhere. They're going to likely go to their bank. So if they do go to their bank, um, they, you want to ensure that the financial planner is not losing their business at the same time. We have the advantage of being very selective with our lenders. So if we know and we are working with a client often, we can um, you know, work with them through with forward planning for things like building their real estate portfolio. Well, maybe certain lenders have better add backs or offsets. They allow so many doors or properties. So we have access to all these different lenders where we can strategically place the client to um, be in line with what their goals are and help the financial planner as well and we can avoid the banks if possible so again this is on my next slide but because we have access to so many lenders we can protect the client from transferring over their investments to the banks we're trying to our client process um, is, you know, everyone's pretty similar, but we cre create uh, an online application in our case. If you do it manually, just change it. And uh, we, I personally gather all the documents up front. Again, this is something that I think you should do or consider doing, especially with financial planner clients, because you want to really avoid giving an advice or opinion or a pre-approval and then retracting what you're saying after you receive all the documents because then the client will be likely be dissatisfied and tell their financial planner and you may ruin that relationship so by getting everything up front you can provide the client with an accurate pre-approval or approval or you know information uh, complete our analysis so I just by that by that I mean you know looking over their mortgage application doing a refinance analyzer through our mobile app or a spreadsheet um, or like a purchase report or rate comparison that kind of stuff um, and provide sound advice so just because I said we can protect them from the blank the banks doesn't necessarily mean that's what we'll do if that's the best fit for the client of course we're not going to keep that from them we make that clear to the financial planner that we're always doing in the best interest of the client but if we can that's what this slides about is we're going to protect their work and their business so because we have access to so many different lenders and um, programs and policies we can be very selective on where we go and the reason we're able to build this fence around the clients is that we have access to monoline lenders you know first national merrick's lenwise mcap all of those great lenders with great rates and programs that don't offer uh, insure life insurance or um, 
tax-free savings accounts, RSPs, investments, that kind of stuff. So by going to a monoline lender, you really are putting, you know, a protection barrier from your client leaving and taking their investments to Merrick's because that would just never happen. But as I know from working at the bank and many of you know, when we do a mortgage application, we do a collection of the client's assets. So we actually see, you know, they have 100 grand with IG Wealth uh, in non-registered investments and 25,000 in RSPs and 35,000 in tax freeze and this and that, right? And so we can see all that. Well, so can the bank. So when I actually worked at the bank, uh, we got paid extra to refer the clients to a financial planner. So if I saw the client had a great list of assets and I could refer it over to, you know, Joe who worked next door as a financial planner, I would get paid on that a referral fee. So it was in my benefit as well for these cross sales. As you know, banks are very heavy in credit unions on cross sales because that's how they make additional business like credit cards um, and these investments and in insurance products. So by going to a monoline, you're protecting the client, right? But then again, go back to that sound advice where you're saying um, if, if the monoline is not the best fit because they're high net worth and they're better with TD, well, you're going to provide them with good advice and, and place them with the best lender, of course. So it's just making them aware that you have more options and that you're on their side, like you're not after their investments and stuff. So I'm here to help you with the mortgage, just provide value and protect your client from going to the bank which is likely where they're going to go if they need a mortgage right ideal clients um as much as you know we they, they work with all types of clients financial planners you do want to make them aware that you can help those first-time home buyers through the home buyers plan which is the thirty-five thousand in rrs piece or the future program the tax-free savings first time home buyers tax-free savings account i think i butchered that but anyways that one's up to forty thousand so a great way to kind of reverse the conversation at this point is asking them about their opinion on the FHSA um, program that's coming out, right? You know, what do they think about it? That kind of stuff. Uh, do they plan on, you know, approaching young people to kind of start these investment type, you know, portfolios? So just see what their thoughts are and learn more about it. Of course, before you go, there's lots on the government website too about this. Investment financing, by this what I mean is people who are investing in second homes, recreational properties, and rental properties. So here you can help them build their real estate portfolio, again, by providing more options, you know, more doors, more properties, addbacks, offsets, that kind of stuff, and strategically helping them build the portfolio for whatever their goals are. Debt consolidation is the biggest one for financial planners, and again, a benefit of you helping them out. The majority of time people will approach their financial planners to withdraw money when they're in financial distress and i've been there myself if you were on my first webinar i actually kind of told everyone about this time my husband and i were building a house and things went really bad we had a fraudulent builder he took a bunch of our money didn't finish the house and we had to pull all our investments sell my car it was really messy but anyways um when we approached our financial planner the first thing he asked was if, if we had other options could we get a second or private mortgage borrow money and we just we didn't have any of those options so that was a huge hit to his business and his portfolio as well right so a lot of people will go to their financial planners when they want to buy a vehicle or their kids are buying a house so they want to pull out a down payment for them that kind of stuff so it's just um you know debts as well but they're kind of coming to the financial planner to pull money that's when you can really help them get um, money from their homes refinance consolidate whatever that looks like because it, it could be really advantageous for both the client and the financial planner at that point High net worth, if you connect with a, um, a financial planner that just deals with high net worth, it could be really interesting. Sometimes this can be hard to do because every lender has different programs, but we obviously have options in, in our industry to help high net worth clients with A lenders and B lenders and C lenders. I recently got a high net worth deal that I couldn't get done anywhere with 
with a private lender here locally and I was like shocked that they even considered it but it worked out so letting them know you have access to different programs for that and you can definitely uh, look into helping them with financing the other thing good with um, high net worth clients is they're actually no stranger to getting mortgages and leveraging their properties and their investments because um, some of the richest people I've ever dealt with have all their properties except their primary are uh, leveraged up to 80 percent loan to value because they can write off the taxes for rentals and stuff like that so they're usually really smart with their money and they're open to getting financing because it means keeping their investments intact and usually earning more money we're in a unique situation right now where um, obviously rates are high but um, you know if that changes and we go back down to like a regular three percent and the financial planner can earn seven to ten percent well, it's usually always smarter to just get a mortgage at that point retirees is great because people are now turning their rsps to rifts you can talk about you know getting um a mortgage or a line of credit before they retire is really important because um, their income is going to be higher than it will be when they retire that's for sure so and reminding them you can help them once they retire as well with incomes like cpp oas and pension income a lot of retirees don't think that we can use that for some reason but we can um, and then depending on the client situation of course reverse mortgage is very situational but for those who need that supplemental income who can't qualify for a home equity line of credit or mortgage um, can help them you know stay in their homes not have to sell or whatever that may look like self-employed financing honestly we we positioned ourselves as like self-employed experts and i love i love it for that because most brokers don't like to help self-employed because they're too complicated and take too much time but a lot of financial planners work with self-employed people who are investing their corporation money or all that um you know hopefully extra income they're earning from establishing their business so just telling them we have lots of options especially in the alternative space when the bank turns and says no that we can help uh the clients from there because you know mortgages are, are essentially tax-free money for the most part so these self-employed people can use them for all sorts of reasons um, or to again purchase more investment properties or whatever that looks like grow their business so we can offer them again more private private options and alternatives is the great way to pitch that Client analysis, and when I'm done this presentation, I'll drop my screen and I will share what this looks like. But uh, some of you may have access to the Canadian Mortgage app or a version of it with your company. So I'm with Dominion Lending Centers and they offer all their agents a version of this mobile app. I actually pay for my own so that it's a branded towards mortgage tech the mortgage company um i can't remember what we pay it was an annual fee but with that i get access to give my uh, referral partners like my realtors i identified my top five realtors and i gave them their own branded app as well so anyways i'm a big fan of the canadian mortgage app and the tools that it can provide so if you don't have it definitely check it out or find a way to manually make these calculations so in the first phone picture consolidation reports essentially what this is is like a refinance analyzer so this one will show you know what your current mortgage is versus your you know new mortgage what we plan to consolidate your debts with or take out equity or whatever that may be and you can see it it really nicely shows payments lowered by 1400 bucks a month reduced you by 23 percent um it talks about you know your amortization the interest saved over time or like a break even point because right now with high rates it's not always savings it's more about cash flow for refinances so it'll show the client that as well it's really well um, positioned and the the financial planners love this report because it's very detailed and professional looking so i like it another cool thing thing is um, with the app it has the ability to do a live link and what the live link is is you can either text it or email it to the financial planner they could view it on their computer screen while they're chatting with the client or you're there or on the phone or something and you can actually make changes on your phone while they're looking at it on their computer so it's a live link and what's nice about that is like adding in a vehicle payment or adding in an extra 40k for renovations you can see the changes in the payments and everything live which is super cool 
Another feature is the purchase report uh, and the rate comparison. I have one financial planner who's always kind of grilling me on rates, you know, fixed versus variable, 25 year versus 15 year. She's just kind of trying to figure out cash flow wise what's best for her clients, um, what rates we can lock in. So this is a great way to kind of show them that benefit is like here, again, very professional report. I used to do it all manually when I was at the bank and very email, you know, like jotted down the savings and stuff, but this is, way easier way <laughs> but um they yeah, are lots of tools there so you want to just say again it's a free added um support that you're going to be offering their clients and them to make their job easier and better and show their clients that they have a professional working for them that's on their side to give their clients kind of the best service possible Recent closings, again, you can change this, and um, I, these are all made up. Uh, some of them relate to previous closings, but not really. But what I do suggest here is um, adding a recent closings that tie into the financial planner or invest or um, insurance agent, kind of what they're looking for, like something they can relate to. You can do something about first time home buyers, but it would be much better if you had a first time home buyer that was bragging about um, the fact that you helped them with the like the transition of using their thirty five thousand for the home buyers plan and you were very knowledgeable on it and you know they didn't realize that kind of stuff. So using those types of um, recent closings as examples will really help the financial planner relate to your services and with their clients, right? So the first one's about retirement, uh, home equity line of credit, basically, I just say that the retirement guy is about a year away and we suggested him getting a line of, a line of credit with the max value of 65% while his income was still high. He hopes not to use it, but in case he, he needs it, it's there for an emergency or to help his kids buy a future home, which is very common with, with uh, our current economy and the way that interest rates and uh, house prices have gone crazy over the last few years. A self-employed client declined by the bank. Uh, we see this all the time, but this example is for somebody who's less than two years in business. If they go to the bank, they're definitely not going to fit the banker's box, which is a traditional two-year average of their business income. But we have access to monolines who will do the less than two years in business if they're from the same industry. So for this example, I talk about the carpenter who was a car, you know, a um, employee carpenter, and then he transitioned to a self-employed carpenter, and we were able to get him approved with a monoline letter lender with only five percent down and the client couldn't even believe we got it done because they were declined by the bank who told them yeah no way you need two years so again we have more options in the bank and just uh, making that very clear to the financial planner that it a no isn't always a no with us right debt consolidation again very relatable to the financial planner a friend needed help with refinancing and paying out debt and we provided a free financial review showing her the savings of and the extra cash flow she would get by consolidating her debt back into her mortgage without having to touch her investments so again all great examples that the financial planner may be able to relate to with their current clients I kind of touched on this at the beginning but you're really going to want to know what's going on with the interest rates and economy and market update. Um, if you have the chance to present to your financial planner in person that day, um, you can bet that they're gonna ask you. <laughs> so I added this slide because it will come up anyways, whether during your presentation or just um, having a conversation with them. So this was done in September. So of course, after the next rate review, be sure to look at this and change it if you do decide to purchase the presentation. But Prime rate, uh, what I mentioned here, as you can see from the graph, is the highest it's been since uh, May 2008 when it was at 4.75%, and we've already surpassed that at the 5.45%. I kind of have a little blurb in here about some economists think that September 7th's rate hike may have been the last one, but of course, as you all know, we don't have a crystal ball. <laughs> we probably, none of us have any idea what's gonna happen in the October late review here, um, so we'll find out soon but um, again this is a great time to pause the presentation and chat about this kind of stuff because again it's something that they're going to love to talk about they're interested in because the stock market's been di directly affected as well and um, yeah it's just a good way for you to connect so understanding the history of this is really important you can see 2017 2018 all these 
increases as well. So if you are new to the industry, this is important to note that even though we did see many increases this year, we saw a similar pattern in 2018, which is when I started to become a broker. So the conversation was very similar with all these increases, people panicking about locking in and everything like that. But my biggest pitch to people, because I'm a variable rate kind of girl, is that you know what goes up must come down. So we are at a very high point now. We may see one more increase, in my opinion. And then I think we're going to flatten out. And usually, a, a stable economy represents, uh, you know, pre-pandemic days, which is around that 3.95 a percent. So, again, these in Canva, you just click on it, you can add details, and it's really easy to make make your own graph or edit it. Here's some rates since the start of the pandemic. Um, so the gray is the historical five-year posted rate, which tends to be a touch higher than normal fixed rates. But again, you may want to add November, uh, October's uh, recent rates because we've seen a bit of an increase again here. But I'm um, just saying fixed rates, you know, highest they've been since November 2008 um, for as far as up. Uh, um, posted rate goes 6.75%. And the variable rates here in the red, uh, same thing, highest we've seen since January 2009 at 4.55. 4.55 is like an insured monoline rate. So, I mean, most lenders are higher than that. And if they need a rental property or whatnot, it's even higher. So, again, depending on when you present this or use this presentation, just know your facts. You know, these are all points they're going to want to talk about and the trends. What I didn't add in here, I didn't really have the space, but would have been interesting to see is again this 2018 kind of trajectory in this one, because it would show that even though we're higher than that now, that it is it is a wave and that's what interest rates are. They go up and they go down. Financial planners get that. So it's it's just letting them know I'm here to talk to your clients as well. If they have questions about locking in a rate, they're coming up for renewal soon and they're worried about the, the high rates any of that stuff, you're just here to offer advice and help their clients, right? So understanding these trends and stuff will help we make a, a really good, strong conversation uh, with these financial planners. Google review. Um, I think this is important whether you're new or not. If you're new, you can add your brokerages, a review review for your brokerage, or if you are um, established, you can add something. But my biggest recommendation is to relate the review again to financial planners. So having a recent retiree review, somebody who's um, purchased an investment property or something like that, uh, debt consolidation, you can put that review there. And then that way, again, it's more relatable. Let's chat. You want to find a way to leave your information. The presentation is great, but um, I'll go through it in the, the next slide and share my screen after as well. I tend to leave pamphlets. Uh, pamphlets are bulky. They're bigger than business cards. They tend to be left on the table for somebody to pick up and read. Or if it's for geared for their clients, they might even put them out on display because it's something they can show off or they can keep in their drawer to give to their clients when they meet face to face. So I think that that's probably been the best approach for me. I just tend to think, I personally think people throw out your business card because that's what I do when I get a business. So I do like the, the pamphlets. Whenever I bring pamphlets, people are always like, oh, wow, this is nice. It's just a, it's just different. So you want to stand out amongst the other people who are approaching the same industry professionals. So this is the last slide of the presentation to the realtor or to the financial planners. But I have got one more here for you guys. So um, how do I actually find financial planners to work with is the biggest question I've had on some of my coaching calls and with my new agents, that kind of stuff. But um, Google, basically I go on Google and I write down an Excel list of their first name, last name, their email addresses, their web addresses, um, their physical office location, and um, a note section when I pop by, what happened when I checked in with them again, that kind of stuff. So I do keep Excel spreadsheets of most of um, my referrals, leads, all that kind of stuff. You were part of my first presentation for the Growing Your Pipeline. I'm a big believer in um, like KPIs, so key performance indicators, which means keeping track of everything you do so you can measure it um, at a later point. So I do that with my contacts as well. So Google as many as you can in your area, financial planners and insurance agents. 
and uh, break it down per area and pick one day that week or the next week to visit as many as possible. And the benefit here of doing them all in one day is you'll notice your pitch is going to get better and better and better. And again, like I said, you'd love to present this presentation if you do do a pop in and, you know, say, hey, do you have a minute to uh, go through my presentation? I'd love to show you how I can help your clients. Most of the time, the answer is going to be no. But if you do your research beforehand and you know when you go to this financial planner's office that you're meeting with Joe, the financial planner, when you ask the administrative assistant who usually sits at the front desk, say, hey, is Joe here? I'd love to uh, I'd love to take a minute to chat with him. They'll be like, oh, okay, do you have a meeting? No, but you're there, so they'll probably go get him, right? And then at that point, that's when you take that five minutes to kind of like hopefully talk about interest rates, um, had any recent issues with closings lately. Like, I'd love to show you this presentation. Can we set up a meeting next week or can I come back? That kind of stuff. So don't be discouraged if they don't have time to meet with you and go through your presentation because you have to be mindful of their time as well. If somebody popped into your office, you probably wouldn't have half an hour on the spot. Um, but you can easily be like, yeah, let's meet next week for coffee or whatever that may look like. Then you always follow up the next day because before you leave, you're going to grab their information, um, their card or something like that, or have it already in your spreadsheet. Hey, Joe, it was great talking to you yesterday. I was really hoping we can meet for coffee in the next few weeks. If he doesn't answer, hey, it is what it is. A few weeks later, try one more time. Okay, you'll notice it takes a few follow ups with leads before you can actually land a meeting and not to be discouraged when you don't if they don't call you back and they delete your emails or whatever I use email campaigns so I can sell I can tell when people open and delete my emails or withdraw from my email list so I don't get um, but heard about it because I just think okay well that's not the person I was meant to work with and establish a relationship with because whoever it is is you're gonna you're gonna strongly bond with them and likely um, help each other out and this is gonna be a long-lasting relationship so doing it all over again sometimes you'll pop into the same office or you'll just continue going through your Excel spreadsheet that you met uh, that you made and continue building your list from there so before I hop off my screen, I'm going to delete this and okay, present. Okay, can you guys um, see my screen again? Yep, I'm hoping. Okay, perfect. Thanks, sir. I can't see you guys when I'm on a different view. This is the example of that uh, consolidation report from the mobile app. So again, it's branded towards my company. You could see me and my husband here uh, kind of logo. This is the live link. Um, so I just did a test here. Um, of course, these rates are no longer existing, 1.99%, but um, just kind of shows your mortgage was 250. Now it's 283 because we're going to consolidate $30,000 in debt. So um, that kind of stuff, it talks about interest saved over time or, um, you know, the new amortization savings, or maybe there isn't and it's just cash flow. So here you can see total savings in 33 months, which is kind of um out you know really great and this was this was the norm when interest rates were low like consolidating was always people's best options now we have to work a little bit harder for it but the real benefit is um cash flow so payments lowered by x amount you'll notice that more in your reports these days because uh, interest rates are higher but it's all about consolidating those higher interest loans and just the payments like you see truck payments now i'm sure if you've done a mortgage application with one some of them are like 1300 dollars. so by consolidating even though they may pay more interest over time if they're saving their truck payment and able to reduce their overall um cash flow then that that is key for some people. Imagine having an extra 830 bucks a month. So again, financial planners love this. I also share this with um, just my clients who are refinancing as well. I always jot them down an email with their options and sometimes I'll provide them with multiple uh, reports just showing. So it does show that your amortization is extended. There's obviously fees to refinance, that kind of stuff. So 
you can add different debts, credit card, vehicle payments, line of credits, mortgages, that kind of stuff. Uh, this is just a simple one, but, and then the, uh, so the, again, this is live. So if they were looking at it, you can be ma making some changes, but then they'll also have the ability to download a PDF if they wanted to send it to their client. That's nice and professional. Okay, and then um, the last presentation was some of the questions they were asking about, you know, what kind of pamphlets I drop off. So these are all actually ones that I've, I've actually used and um, I've rebranded just for my Broker Pro, but my Mortgage Tech logo was on here and I mean, I've got them, got them right here. <laughs> So, you know, my mortgage tech logo is on it and you can see me and my husband are in the back, but it looks pretty much the exact same because those are my company colors that you're seeing. But what's really cool about um, brochures is they're like this thick. These ones are nice and glossy, so they're, um, they look really professional. And again, it's just something nice for them to keep out. These ones, I recently used two of these. So this one is thinking about retiring and then this one looks very similar but it says thinking about downsizing so these two i actually recently used in a downsizing seminar and um yeah a lot, a lot of people took them home i got lots of leads from the presentation which was surprising because they were all retired but we talked about home equity line of credits and it was really good so having your financial planner have a couple of these in their drawer will really help when they're having those client conversations about you know managing their cash flow and um, supplementing their income in retirement or emergencies that kind of stuff so you can purchase these on my broker pro as well and they're already written for you you know pre-retirement's the best because we can help when you're already retired yes we can still use your income and here's you know the gist of some of our products that relate to retirement helocs mortgages because 35 percent of retirees still need mortgages so you'd be surprised at how many people either with bad credit or they're upgrading their home maybe they're downsizing but in my case for this presentation um somebody was buying the penthouse suite of this of this um new pre-sale that we were promoting with the realtors so their house obviously they had a shortfall right so they need a small mortgage alternatives blah 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 reverse financing so we use this one um and I also do use this one, Self-Employed Mortgage Solutions is great for financial planners as well, because um, as we know, self-employed people always struggle to find uh, financing and good solutions with um, the way that they either claim their income or pay themselves or if they're incorporated or not, right? So again, adding a Google review that relates to the industry, hopefully a local business owner, and um, it's just slightly different, but we talk about tax reminders, how their income when they, they claim at a certain year affects their qualifying for multiple years after if we have to use a two-year average. And then these programs, even though it looks very similar to the last brochure I showed you, because you want to stay, stay with a similar brand, of course, so when people pick up your brochure, they know it's you. Um, here I changed it to traditional qualifying for um, to your average stated income, high net worth and alternative lending, all things that relate to self-employed clients. So this one I give to financial planners and I also really give it to accountants because uh, they meet with their clients in January to April. And I usually get calls like, do you have any more of your, <laughs> your pamphlets? Because they meet their clients face to face too. So I think that was, let me stop presenting here. Um, as far as some of the questions in the last presentation, a few people asked where I get these printed. Uh, right within Canva, you can print. So if you have Canva or you don't, um, I suggest it. They're basically linked with staples now. So they'll ship it to your door or they'll, um, or you can pick it up at a local Staples, which is great, it's very quick. I did mine the Monday of my presentation, that was Thursday, and I picked them up on th on Wednesday. <laughs> so they're very affordable. I used to use Vistaprint and I stopped. I, I use Canva only now. And then the cool thing with Canva, if you do have a pro account, you can use like, if you do buy these presentations or pamphlets or anything else in Canva, um, you can with one click change the, um, the look of your, I'll show you guys the look of your presentation. So I'll just go back to make sure you guys can see. Okay. And um, so this is just that presentation. 
if you did styles. So just because Sarah's in here right now, we'll do Sarah's. I can easily change this to her fonts and her colors with one click. So that's like the really cool thing with Canva Pro. It's um it's so easy and so efficient to make these changes. So this is called a brand. So you can make these changes yourself easily without it having to look like my presentation. Um, you would just make sure you have a brand within your Canva and uh, you have to have Canva Pro for that though. Any questions <laughs> after I, I talked for so long? I had, I just have one kind of question. So you had like two pages of the ideal clients and you kind of covered basically every kind of client. Would you cherry pick the ones and just have like a one thing or would you just be like, hey, I, ideal client is everybody? I, I would probably break it down. So this is like your goal is to show up it personally me pop into the office, right, to try and uh, get a meeting on the spot without an appointment. But like I said, that usually doesn't happen. Right. So in that five minutes where you've attracted the financial planner, hopefully out of his office, you're going to you're going to hopefully have a quick chat. You know, which kind of clients do you usually work with and then see from there. And then if they do, then you can also alter your presentation to meet them. So if he only works with high net, then you would probably delete those slides or adjust it and maybe make just a few high net worth slides. You know, this is what TD does. This is what Scotia does. This is what dollar for dollar high net worth means, that kind of stuff. And then same thing with your recent closings, you'd probably change it all to high net worth. But if it's if you're just meeting and you're lucky enough to get a meeting on the spot, then it's very generalized, right? Um, Sarah, do you have one of these for accountants? I do, yeah. So under our My Broker Pro, like the shop, it's yeah. just called Self-Employed Mortgage Solutions. And you'll see like in the in the um, description, it talks about best used for um, accountants. Of course, you can use these for almost anyone, right? Like if your financial planner is more geared towards self-employed you could even just use that presentation which really breaks down the stated income alternative lenders private financing it gets it in a lot more detail i'll show you here quickly um, i won't go through it because that'll take another hour but we'll hopefully do a webinar on that as well but i i do find like i mentioned prior to this um accountants generally meet with their clients in um, january too about April when they're doing tax time. So we have a presentation actually with our referral partners that are accountants. We work with one that's in the office who's like our biggest supporter. He sends us so many deals. Him and my husband go for beers and they're just best buds. But he sends like, yeah, so many ap like applications and leads to us as well. So what we did was now that we've established one relationship in that office, we're actually going to be presenting to the rest of the financial planners or sorry accountants this fall so we're still waiting to lock down a time but he's scheduling that with his um, partners and everybody there are about 12 accountants in the office and now we're lucky enough to have this guy who's like sarah and luke are awesome and this and that so when we go we're presenting they're taking an hour out of their day to hear hear us and hopefully we get to gain one or two referral partners from that so this one's very much like that. We talk about the issues that self-employed people have. Um, we talk about um, how we work with the accountant for future financing needs, which is like future planning on their two-year average, or you know, is it better to just pay 1% for alternative lending or actually um, pay taxes and qualify at traditional lending? And that can have a huge difference in the down payment, right? So we talk about... Uh, how if they claim income in 2021, they don't really usually realize that's going to affect them until they're done their taxes in 2024. So picture when it's 2023, we're going to have to use 2022 and 2021 year average. So if that average still doesn't work, they have to wait till their taxes are done the following year. So most people don't realize the timeline there, right? So we just kind of go through the programs, two years, alternative lenders, high net worth, Opco versus Holdco, rental properties, minimum down payments depending on what they're purchasing. Um, you know, here's things like, like, like I, I work with um, 
your company name. VIP access here is I use the mobile app again generally for my presentations if you have it or not. Your company, your logo. Here you'll put feedback. So these would be reviews from your clients. Get in touch. Thanks for your attention. So very similar. Um, but at the same time, um, it just really does break down more the self-employed mortgage solutions, which if you're lucky enough to connect with an accountant, which I strongly suggest you do, um, those deals are amazing because accountants are so smart, are generally smart, and they understand these numbers and these averages or the the struggles that financial or that self-employed people have when it comes to do I claim more income or do I just you know, go alternative or private. So you're here to help with that and do some forward planning. So from January to April, my husband and I were like just doing like comparisons for people. If you, before they claimed their income in April, the accountant would call us, be like, should he claim 100 or should he claim 120? Or if he doesn't claim anything at all, can we go alternative or can he do stated? So we just were running numbers like crazy. And then it wasn't until the summer that these some of them were like, hey, I want to buy right now and go alternative. Or some of them, hopefully we hear from next year because they actually listened to us and they claimed X amount. So I strongly recommend that one. But of course, you can use that same presentation for the financial planner. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I see Raymond's got his hand up. How polite. <laughs> uh, hey, Sarah, great presentation, by the way. Um, real quick question. You mentioned at the beginning, uh, My Broker Pro. Can you just touch on that, what exactly that is? Yeah, so that's actually how I know Sarah on the call here and many that made the first presentation. Sorry if you weren't able to, to get on, but um, it's essentially a marketing company for mortgage canadian mortgage brokers so because i was doing a lot of these presentations social media all this stuff that we all try to do by ourselves i created my broker pro which is a marketing agency and i've got a few assistants that work for me and essentially we share uh, social media templates we do social media management we share things like this presentation that's available for purchase on that website um, we're slowly going to be adding things like ads management uh, somebody recently ad asked for um like social media engagement, like how to increase followers organically. So these are all things, of course, with time, I have to find the right people to join my team for it to be efficient. But essentially what the way you explained it, I was ta talking to Jordan about this as well is I've hired social media agencies myself. And as mortgage brokers, it's hard to find somebody who knows about the industry so that the content is relatable it's not us based um, or it's not just fluffy post all the time of course we need those you know what's your favorite local coffee shop or one we recently had a lot of engagement with was funny it was like you know hopefully this doesn't break up your marriage but like does your who keeps the house at what temperature at night so those are needed to keep engagement but those posts about you know fixed versus and our Canadian economy is it a good time to buy a house that kind of stuff you'll find that with you know my first agency um, it just you don't get that you just get you know like generalized content so basically I approve all the posts and we add the occasional mortgage broker like um, rate comparison payment comparison we've done like some things when prime rate or you know change that kind of stuff so we add in really a professional posts and then along with some other ones i approve them all but every single one of my clients gets the same post but they may have different uh pictures so sorry captions is like what the write-up is everyone gets the same captions because we're all talking about the same thing anyways so that's that was my approach to saving money for our clients because otherwise management 700 sometimes two thousand dollars a month for a good agency right so this way we can keep our prices low because we're you reusing the content which most of us are talking about the same thing anyways when rates went up we all talked about the rates <laughs> so as long as somebody's not directly in your area it's usually not an effect um, i do have clients that are in the same small town right now so we're waiting to see how that goes they're both aware and they're both okay with it um, but they only have like 10,000 people in their 
their town, but generally we only have one or 2,000 followers. So, you, you know, you don't usually see that stepping on each other's toes as much. But yeah, we offer like blog services, all sorts of stuff really that, um, and it's still growing. I just started it in, in August. <laughs> so it's just mostly, yeah, That's yeah, it's mostly, you know. Yeah, if Sarah was like, hey, I need a blog, I would, we would create that. We just created a package for it last month. So monthly, you can sign up and get a monthly blog that's very industry related. And so is it like a membership fee that you would pay on a monthly basis? Or how does the structure work? It depends on the on what the service you're looking for. So the social media ones are monthly um, subscriptions. The blog one is a monthly subscription. So you just automatically get your service every month. But the templates are in like a shop, like a marketplace. So we've got, um, again, slowly adding, but these presentations are on there. That um, downsizing seminar I just did, of course, was branded towards mortgage tech. So I have to rebrand it and share it with everyone. But as we kind of have these things you know a couple of the brokers want a um purchase plus improvement one for realtors so that one i don't actually have so i would create it right and then add it so i don't know if you're part of the my broker pro facebook group but we have that as well so that's kind of told people if you want to boss me around in that group just tell me what you need and we'll find a way to make it work because it benefits me too like i use all this stuff right the blogs i use on my website um, I've got like um, a thing for financial planners actually that here I'll show you. We just created and shared and basically what uh, we were looking for was, you know, something they can send out to their clients. Mm, it's called. So this copy of mortgage. So this was my company's one, Mortgage Check. So then I created this and then shared it on my broker pro. My husband's very lucky. I just promote him. <laughs> he doesn't have to do any of the work. So this is our colors. That's our little logo, that kind of stuff. And um, I've got a little graph here of the history of interest rates since 2008. And this is a payment comparison. So at the time, you know, fixed rates were a little bit lower than they are today but um compare comparing you know buying a house in february 2022 when rates were around three percent and i got that information from my rate sheets because i'm with dlc so i just went back on my emails standard um insured rate was 2.99 and then at the time i wrote this it was 4.4.59 so comparing you know if somebody bought a house and what this article is saying for 750 in February 2022 and with the recent decline some in some places we've seen actually more than 17% we've seen like 30 um you know they could be buying that same house for 625 so this payment comparison breaks down that it's actually $51 cheaper per month for them to buy that same house right now and some other benefits include a smaller mortgage, a smaller down payment, and less default insurance. Not to mention, if they go variable, like I think I say up here, like rates won't stay high forever, right? So we kind of just create that stuff um, as it comes in and it's industry related and we just obviously share it. So those templates are all editable in Canva. And I also encourage people to use them for their referral partners. So if you had a realtor or a referral partner, you would add the one I have for sale has two people at the bottom, not just like where my husband was. And you would add like, you know, Raymond, and then you would add Joe, the realtor, and you would rebrand it to their colors. Try your best, of course, and then they're likely to send it out. So you'd be like, hey, Joe, I just made this for you. It's about, you know, should you be buying a house right now in today's market? And then he, he'll send it out. So because I keep track of all my email campaigns, um, I can see when the realtors are using it. And they really liked that one. So, um, yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Where can yeah. I go to get more information about my broker pro or sign up? Um, I'll put um, in the chat. This is just the website and then my broker pro there's the shop. So if you go to the website, you'll see the um, subscriptions, which is right now just there's three social media packages and the blogs. And then uh, the shop has the available templates kind of for now. 
we have a free subscription as well for the social media where you just get static content every week no captions so no write-ups but you'll get the post every week at least so lots of people use that one as well especially if they're new that's awesome thank you so much no problem any other questions are you gonna send the recording of this out after so like there's a lot. yeah i can see it's still recording so thankfully yeah. i think we got it this time but yeah i'll send it out to the whole email list so if you did uh, sign up through my broker pro and if, if raymond you didn't just go on to my broker pro and just like sign up for newsletters or something then you'll get the the recording it'll just be on the website but i'll give you the link to the recording because our other one, if you didn't, if you weren't a part of it, um, is available as well. My broker pro slash pipeline, and that one's still been very popular. That's the one that's growing your business from like zero to forty four. One I kind of touched on a couple times, um, and this presentation from today, I kind of touch on it again, where it's like different ways I built my business. You know, reaching out to financial planners was just one of those ways that I was able to achieve a higher volume in such a short period of time. But it's just kind of talks about the struggles of being a broker and how hard it is and um, things you can do that again worked for me may not necessarily work for you but um, it's still a really great webinar lots of great feedback from those who joined that one we sold out right away i don't know if sarah were you able to join that one no way yeah i was yeah i think it went well it's just a lot of new brokers were feeling um discouraged with today's market and you know it's it's hard right now houses aren't selling like crazy and it's hard to gain these referral partners and a lot of people were thinking of quitting so i just had commented on one of the mortgage groups like don't quit this is such a lucrative business there's so much money to be made and i just kind of said how i went from zero to 44 and like so many people reached out so i was like okay i'll do a webinar so that's where these webinars were kind of born from um that was that simply that post so anyways it's been two months now and hopefully we can do more i'd like to do that accountant one soon as well mm -hmm. and the yeah, other I love so mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the accounting one too, just because I, the leads you get from accountant accountants are so nice. I don't know. Yeah. Do you work with some already, Sarah? Well, no, that's my plan is that's, mm -hmm. I want to branch off that way. I feel mm -hmm. like it's. Yeah. Cool. And I feel like it's not so saturated. Like I don't really know many brokers that work with accountants. And the reason we connected with this one was uh, simply through a, a business networking group um i've been a part of some bnis in the past and uh and they were okay then the pandemic hit and they kind of fell off because they're in-person meetings generally so once uh, they were available earlier this year i just did a pop by to one of them the first person i met was an accountant well he gave me a deal on the spot so then i thought well this might be worth joining yeah. and um yeah ever since then we've really connected with him and again it was timing we met him in february and it was just like he was sending us leads like hotcakes because it was just that time of year. So it may be slower to meet with accountants right, right now. Not so much meet with them. Like if you were like, hey, let's go for lunch, they'd probably say yes. But the leads probably won't roll in until January through April. So maybe it is a good time then. Yeah, is for at least like the coffee what? meetings, lunch, yeah. Yeah. yeah, which is why they're they're able to take the time to listen to my husband and I do a webinar in a few weeks from now, right? They've got the time. If we had asked that in April, they would have never even answered our emails or anything. They would have said, yeah, get lost because they all work 18 hour days in April, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you'll find too, like a referral wise back to them. It's amazing. Like we had some deals with our self-employed clients that like as much as you tell them your taxes need to be done you know in that april you know april may area some of them are still shopping for houses with no taxes done so then all of a sudden they're like hey sarah i put in an offer and i'm like are your taxes done no so anyways this guy would like stay up till midnight finishing the taxes for us so that like that relationship you build is like it's going to be so amazing because they send lots of clients to you but you'll have the ability to lean on them at that tax season too when it's really hard to get those deals done but, um, yeah. mm -hmm. okay 
Anything else, guys, before we jump off? Sarah, just one last question for you. So I'm checking yeah. out the site now uh, and under plans and pricing. So I might have missed this. Do you guys not have any plans available right now? No, we should have some. So let's see if I go to my broker. Pro. Are you in the shop or just the My Broker Pro? So I believe My Broker Pro. Okay, never mind. I refreshed my page and I see some plans now. Oh, nope. <laughs> like magic. Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. you'll see just to touch on them. There's the, so there's the free one that's not in there. Cause obviously I wouldn't collect your payment for that one. There's the mm -hmm. free one. That's just static content every Sunday. Do it yourself is um, where you receive the templates and the templates are all in Canva. So again, you can edit them to whatever you want, add your logos, your at symbol for your um, usernames. And then I do recommend kind of adding your pictures and stuff where you can. And that one's only 35 bucks a month and you'll get the captions. So all the write-ups, again, you can edit it. It's just like an Excel or a PDF sheet to whatever, whatever you want. Um, but at least you don't have to come up with all these ideas like daily content. And we do yeah. provide the hashtags too. So again, just generalized hashtags for the post. And we recommend you add like your location. So if you're from, for me, Kamloops, I would do like hashtag Kamloops, hashtag Kamloops mortgage broker, hashtag, you know, like all the local hashtags. And you can save and schedule yourself. If you have Canva Pro, you can actually do that all within Canva Pro scheduling your content as well. Right. Time saver is exactly the same as the do it yourself. So I don't change anything. It looks the exact same, which is kind of like a, a brownish, beigeish kind of theme so that it's uh, very neutral. And um, we just schedule it for you. So we use all the same captions. The posts look the exact same as the do it yourself before the people change it. And then we schedule it for you. And then the standout um, is a little bit more personalized where you would send me like your brand colors, your headshot and your uh, fonts, and we would change it to that one. Sarah, I think that's the one you're in or the, are you in the pro series? I'm trying to think. I, but. I don't know. I'm not in the top one. I'm in the one just below. So standout. Yeah. So standout. It's we use again all the same captions, the write-ups, but we'll make it a little bit more personalized in the sense where we add your photo, we change the colors, the fonts, and um, add some local hashtags kind of for you. And then we provide you a monthly growth stats, which shows like the um, transition of like since we took over your account, kind of engagement, and. Um, yeah, we also add your contact details at the bottom of the post. So there'll be like a phone with your phone number, an email with your email, and a little web icon with your website. So it's a little bit more personalized. And then the Pro Series jumps up to quite a bit more um, even personalized from that. So it's instead of these, these three all follow the same look. So these are all part of the same template. And then the Pro Series is um, like it will look like a completely different template. Like somebody if they want flowers or you know some one guy's with tmg so he wanted it to look like um tmg's like colors the orange so that when tmg still posts to his account the posts still look the same mm -hmm. so for us we have to recreate the posts for this and go from there usually our pro series clients will usually add stuff like um when the rate update happened we posted for all of them that kind of stuff um, when we can um but yeah so that package is a little more advanced and then the blogs the blogs we just started so if you downloaded it now you'd get october's blog and then the rest of them will start on the first of the month and so if i chose like for example the do it yourself do i just mm -hmm. get um one mortgage post for the week with captions or no, i'll show you what it looks like here sorry for all the questions this is just exciting don't, don't apologize no for sure i love it i talk about it all day <laughs> So um, we'll go jump back into, um, let's see here, actually, my Google Docs spreadsheet. I'll go and have a look at what you can see my screen name. So I'll go to books. I think my assistant just published like next week's.
these are all my sorries that I didn't get the right link out. <laughs> and if we go here, let's go. So this is the one that's coming out on Sunday. So they get released every Sunday um, at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So PC time. So this is what you would get. You get an email on Sunday morning. So this one's the one that's coming out. Eight tips for getting the best mortgage rate in Canada. Uh, research mortgage interest rates, mortgage tips, what is debt to income ratio, um, you know, little quotes and reminders, that kind of stuff. Um, I like this one, we'll give mortgage advice for coffee. <laughs> uh, mortgage advice, improving your credit score um, takes time, but it can be done. And then this one is design tip, um, which is just adding warm colors this time of year for fall. So again, it's not all mortgage related. We have had some feedback that for a while it went too fluffy. So we've tried to go back to a little more mortgage related. Um, but local love, this is a good one to like hashtag and, and tag certain local companies as well. So sometimes we'll have that for coffee. This one's for donuts. And then this one's what we just talked about that... Um, that one where like is now still a good time to buy with the high interest rates and showing the comparison between the payments, right? So um, again, all of these were reviewed. So you'd get the Canva templates um, here. So you would just go use template. And again, if you have My Broker Pro, you would like easily be able to edit this to whatever style you want. Right, right. That, um, or add, you know, change this to your company or do something where you like add a frame. And so the, and the so for the do it yourself package, the caption part, you would have to come up yourself. Nope, no, the do it yourself, you get all of it. So this is just the templates. You'll get all nine, you get nine a week. Yeah. The person who has the free one just gets the static images of this. So like just these. Gotcha. Okay, so then you for paying, you get access to changing them so you can change your style and stuff. And then you also get access to um, the captions and hashtags. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I wanted to just make it affordable because otherwise um, it's just, well, most of us, we don't have the time to do this. And then, like I said, that's why we're sharing the same stuff with every person. So it's it's no sweat off my back if if uh, we have one client or 500 because I'm sharing the same stuff. <laughs> Otherwise, I can't come up with 500 captions, right? Right. Um, so yeah. all of these were reviewed by me. For example, the assistant had 10 tips, but some of her tips didn't make sense. So I just edited them. You've got some hashtags here, but again, you'd want to add yours. So you'd simply click on this, change this to your info, right? And then um, yes, we're still on the other page. Like we can't oh, can you? Oh, because this isn't my. Um, sorry, I'm not showing you the. One second here. Stop presenting. Showing you a window. There you go. Okay, can you guys see the spreadsheet now? Yeah. Okay. This is the eight tips. I was saying she had 10, but we reduced them and added some more stuff. You know, like I like to add that, you know, work with a mortgage broker to find the best rates. Like that is one, that's a good tip <laughs> to me, <laughs> a good way to start, but obviously some other things there. And this is where you would change your contact details before you post some generalized hashtags that are very helpful um, to get started, but you would add your own as well for your location. And then mortgage research. So this is all ones next week, you know, talks about, you know, for an A product, we usually want 680 stable income savings habits, that kind of stuff. But we do have access to subprime lenders as well. What is debt to income? So a little bit like learning sometimes we'll try to do. Um, this talks about, you know, GDS and TDS. And this home quote of the day, um, that was the one, you know, we'll give free advice for coffee. So some, you know, something to post on Friday is always nice. Uh, improve your credit score. You always get like with nine, you'll always have a surplus. So if there's one you don't like, that's fine. You don't use it. And I even have one client who just uses the captions and she creates her own post. Like she creates her own pictures. She doesn't like like the ones, oh, not that she doesn't like the ones we give, but she just always posts pictures of like herself and her team. 
So she just makes those herself, but uses it for the captions, which is fine. Some local love, again, with the hashtags, you'd probably hashtag and tag a bunch of businesses too. And is it a good time to buy? So that has to do with that. We kind of talked about, let's, if you bought a house valued at 750 in February and it's now valued at 650, 625, your payment would actually be $51 cheaper, right? This, this number can change and that's why I put it in here. Rates are subject to change without notice. And this is not a commitment to lender approval because obviously, um, as you guys saw from my post, uh, 4.59 fix isn't really available anymore. I mean, 4.55 variable, I guess, is. So it's kind of relatable, but um, yeah, you don't want anybody holding you to it. So if you do post about interest rates, make sure you always add a blurb about, hey, this isn't an approval. <laughs> um, and again, so some tips here, adding your at mortgage company, which is your username, local hashtags, um, and go from that, yeah. So that is do it yourself in a nutshell. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you, Sarah. For yeah, no problem. Thanks you guys for joining. I know we kind of had a little bit of a mess up there with the link, but um, I appreciate you guys joining and letting me record while we do so. And I'll be sure to send it out. So if you're not, if you didn't sign up through my broker pro, just make sure you go in the newsletter section of our website so that when I send this out probably today or the next day, um, you can access it or at least get the emails. Another big reminder is my emails always tend to go to junk mail. So <laughs> always check your junk. I don't know how to fix that. Some people said they've like tried to add me as a contact or whatever, but it doesn't seem to work. So always check your junk mail, um, even for future webinars, because this link, some people were telling me the most recent one I sent ended up in junk as well. So um, just a reminder that even if you are on the website that these tend to be filtered for some reason. So. Anyways, thanks again. Uh, hopefully we can connect next time or if you have questions, you just reach out and we'll chat some more. Thank you. Thanks everyone.